All eyes will be on Capitol Hill today as the Senate is expected to deliver a verdict on the impeachment trial of President Trump. But the president made no mention of it in his State of the Union address last night. Instead, he focused on his past three years in office, touting GOP accomplishments that were met with standing ovations from Republicans. Democrats, however, had a much different reaction. Weijia Jiang has more. The tension between President Trump and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was on display from the beginning when the president appeared to snub Pelosi's handshake and she left out the customary high privilege and distinct honor when introducing Mr. Trump. Members of Congress, the President of the United States. And while President Trump stayed focused on expected policy topics. Jobs are booming. Incomes are soaring. Poverty is plummeting. $2.2 trillion in the United States military. The bloodthirsty killer known as al-Baghdadi is dead. There were several made-for-TV moments throughout the evening, awarding a scholarship for a young high school student. You will soon be heading to the school of your choice. The Presidential Medal of Freedom to conservative radio host Rush Limbaugh. He is here with us tonight, and we couldn't keep him waiting any longer. And setting up a reunion between a deployed service member and his family. That drew a rare bipartisan applause. But throughout the night, Speaker Pelosi visibly expressed her disapproval of several of the president's claims, including this one about health care. We will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. The Trump administration has argued in court that all of the Affordable Care Act should be invalidated, including its protections for pre-existing conditions. Governor Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan, a state Mr. Trump barely won in 2016, struck back as she delivered the official Democratic response. Democrats are trying to make your health care better. Republicans in Washington are trying to take it away. Well, thank you very much. But the unofficial response came from Speaker Pelosi, who stood up and ripped President Trump's speech the minute he was done. Trump's speech tonight. Why did you rip the speech up, Madam Speaker? Why did you speak? Republicans criticized Pelosi for being petty and lacking bipartisanship. So far, she hasn't shown an interest in working with him. Joel Payne joins me now on set. He's a CBSN political contributor and Democratic strategist. So, Joel, Speaker Pelosi caught a lot of attention when she ripped up that speech at the end. Uh, we know a lot of Democratic lawmakers walked out during the speech. Are these actions, though, playing right into the president's hands? Well, you notice in the package there, Weja said the unofficial response. And I think the point here, and, you know, Speaker Pelosi is usually very good at staying on message and staying disciplined. And I think the president triggered her a bit, and I think he got under her skin, which is normally the other way around. Normally it's Speaker Pelosi who gets the best of the president. At least that's mm -hmm. what we've seen over the last three years. I think the president actually built a really interesting and challenging narrative that the speaker had a hard time responding to in the moment. Now, what the speaker and what Democrats will tell you is that the things that the president was saying, despite the fact they were well produced, weren't accurate based on his record. But as we know, this is about imagery and about moments. And I do think the president won the moment last night. The speakers won many of them herself. Um, this will be a battle that continues through the rest of this Congress. We did see Speaker Pelosi sort of roll her eyes or cross her, cross her hands in front of her, her chest to show when she really disagreed with the president. So what parts of the speech do you think other Democrats thought were most egregious? Well, I think the part about health care. I mean, the president to stand up and say that, you know, Republicans and his administration will always protect uh, uh, pre-existing conditions that that protection for Americans that just doesn't you know pass the smell test I mean the, the president is suing mm -hmm. to to end the, the Affordable Care Act particularly around pre-existing conditions and you know Republicans have had about a decade where they could lead on these issues and they really 
haven't. So it just doesn't match up. But the problem is what Pelosi did, it took away from Gretchen Whitmer, who was supposed to be the official Democratic respondent. Immediately after that, I was on air here last night with Elaine Quijano and others. We didn't talk really much about Gretchen Whitmer. We talked about the speaker and her response. That wasn't the message Democrats wanted out well, of last well, night. Let's talk about Governor Whitmer right now, because as you said, she gave the, the official Democratic response after the State of the Union. Do you think her response struck the right tone? Oh, listen, it was well crafted. It made sense. It's the type of message that Democrats want um, on a night like that. Generally speaking, I think the State of the Union responses should kind of go the way of, you know, flip phones and um, old technology. Really? I don't think they work. Anytime you are standing opposite the President of the United States, no matter who he or she is, you are never going to be able to measure up. Um, and, and in the past, these have actually been a trap for people who are on the ascendancy in their pol political career. People like Bobby Jindal and Marco Rubio and others. It hasn't really worked out. The only person it's worked out for is Bob McDonnell. And two years later, he was indicted. So it's not really... It's not really, you know, generally something that that becomes a, a, um, a, you know, a positive for these folks. I do think Governor Whitmer handled it pretty well. I don't think she's going to become a meme, which is kind of the, the table stakes for something like that. That's what you want to avoid. All right. So from the State of the Union address to the other big story that we're, of course, talking about the impeachment trial and the fact that the senators are more than likely expected to acquit President Trump later today. Some Republicans have criticized the House Democrats impeachment inquiry, saying that it moved too quickly. In hindsight, do you think that these House Democrats made any mistakes? I mean, look, I'm sure any legislative action you take, anything you do, there's things you want back. I think overall Democrats handled it appropriately. They needed to move swiftly. They did not need to allow this to linger. No matter how this was handled, most Senate Republicans were not going to, you know, vote to remove Donald Trump from office. You need 67 votes. That's a really high hurdle. I think Adam Schiff acquitted himself very well. I think the other impeachment managers made very good cases. And I think now the challenge is on Democrats to sell a vision that Republicans essentially turn the other cheek, allow this president to get away with what amounts to a cover up, and they've got to sell that to the American people. That's a challenge for Democrats to do. I think that they're going to have nine months to do that on the campaign trail. Yes, yeah, speak uh, looking ahead to November, do you think it's in the Democrats' best interest to, to really move on from impeachment and focus on other issues ahead of the election? I think impeachment is a part of a broader story that Democrats want to tell. Look, they want to talk positively about health care, about those pocketbook issues, but they also do want to talk about the president and how in a lot of ways, and from, from their perspective, he's let the country down. This call was not a perfect call. Even folks like Lamar Alexander, um, you know, Lisa Murkowski have talked about it wasn't a perfect call. So it's not something that even all Republicans are united with mm -hmm. the president with. But I do think that um, Democrats want to move on. They want to talk about some other issues. And they've got a lot of time to do that. We get so caught in the moment in the news cycle. There's a long time between now and November. Joel Payne, thank you so much.